Hey guys, welcome to my final presentation uh, for this class. Um, the genetic disease that I was researching through this semester is called congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Um, the reason I chose it is I just read about it in an article that was unrelated to, I guess, the specifics of what this disease has, but it was mentioned in there and it seemed kind of like a cool name. And so I started looking it up and just dove into it. So hopefully I can share some knowledge with you guys and hopefully this doesn't bore you to tears. So here we go. Uh, yeah, congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Hopefully, I can get this slideshow to work. Maybe. So, a little bit of background on CHS, or sorry, CAH. Uh, it's a hereditary disease that commonly produces a mutated enzyme that is called 21 hydroxylase. Uh, yeah, 21 hydroxylase. Um, and that enzyme um, helps produce cortisol and aldosterone in the body. And when you have congenital adrenal hyperplasia, usually the most common form of this disease comes with the 21 hydroxylase deficiency. And so you'll have reduced cortisol and aldosterone um, in your body. The three most common types of this form of the disease are one, the salt wasting classic type. Um, that's the most serious. And then the more moderate form of that is the simple virulizing classic type. And then the least severe but still um, noteworthy form of this disease is the non-classic type. Um, continuing on with the background, uh, cortisol, its main function um, is blood, oh, I wrote that wrong, blood glucose level regulation and inflammation suppression. Um, it's a hormone that is going to be important with stress management. Uh, so it's going to be elevated when you're stressed. Aldosterone, uh, aldosterone's main function is regulating sodium levels in the body. So these, this list is not fully comprehensive, but it kind of covers the basic things that are going to be affecting the disease state of somebody with uh, congenital adrenal hyperplasia. CAH um, was first identified in 1865 uh, by a man named Luigi de something or other. I'm not going to butcher that name. Uh, it was identified in a patient of his that had abnormal reproductive organs and atypical features. <laughs> But what that meant, what that means is that this person was a female, but they had ambiguous uh, genitalia and the physical features of this female were more typical um, of that of a male. And so Luigi thought that was interesting and I guess started looking into it and found that this was a not common, but a a phenomenon that had occurred several times in other places as well. And then in 1962, uh, the enzyme 21 hydroxylase, which I mentioned earlier, that was discovered to be a key enzyme in the formation of cortisol and aldosterone. And so that's important because 21 hydroxylase is deficient normally in people who have congenital adrenal hyperplasia. 
over 1900 base pairs in its coding sequence and it's made of 465 amino acids. There are currently over 100 known mutations that can occur in this gene and the degree to which um, that affects the hydroxylase enzyme is I guess on a spectrum but it goes from anywhere from semi-functional to completely non-functional. So just give you kind of a little bit of a look at the typical traits of the disease state that can occur. Um, the most serious types, the classic types, uh, result in salt wasting. And so a lot of that has to do with um, aldosterone not being present in great quantities. And so if that's not at levels that are sufficient, it's highly likely that you're going to start losing a lot of salt in your urine and since it's congenital disease it's present in infants and um, they can die from this uh, relatively quickly if it's not diagnosed um, soon enough and then the third type the non-classic type um, what that ends up being is a situation where the the precursor to cortisol and aldosterone ends up becoming um, excess testosterone or androgens in the body. And so in females that can lead to a more male typical phenotype or appearance, and it can lead to ambiguous um, sexual reproductive organs. And then in males, um, I think it can lead to uh, stunted growth and uh, infertility. So CH CAH is, um, it follows an autosomal recessive pattern. And so both parents need to carry the recessive allele in one of their haploid gametes to pass it on to their offspring. So this is a screenshot of the pedigree project that I did earlier in the semester. And as you can see, I just came up with really dumb names and scenarios for this to occur. But if we look at Sven and Boo Boo, um, they're both carriers for this recessive allele. So they have about a 25% chance of passing that on to their offspring. And one, uh, two of them actually got it out of the uh, five, and then they had a partner who was also a carrier, and that resulted in at least one of these pairs ending up with two more children who had the disease. Select the exons, sequence analysis of the entire coding sequence and targeted variant analysis. Um, it's kind of hard to find pricing for this, but the one price that I did find was uh, up to $1,900. I think it might cost more depending on which test you get though. And there's a little bit of controversy surrounding the testing. Some of it had to do with the invasiveness of testing um, prenatally, but the other interesting one that I found was the uh, controversy surrounding hormonal treatment to correct sexual ambiguity in uh, boys and girls who are born with this. Um, some people felt that it's necessary and other people felt that it's not. So there you go. Hope you guys enjoy this and hope I didn't bore you to tears. And uh, lest anybody's interested, here are the references.